Hello everyone, welcome back to Simplicity Reimagined. I'm painting yet another calculator lid that was sort of a commission. So without further ado, let's begin. While the paint was drying, I just completed this pre-sketch right here. And then I put about three to four layers of white paint on the calculator. And then on the back side of the sheet for the pre-sketch, I'm just gonna scribble a bunch of graphite and then you just do this simple DIY hack just to transfer your image from this paper onto the surface that you're creating on. After I did a bunch of scribbling on the back side of the paper, I then simply aligned the design to the lid and taped it in place so the transfer process would work correctly. I then proceeded to take a basic ballpoint pen and pressed hard while tracing the design. In order for the design to be transferred effectively, use a pen with which a good amount of pressure can be exerted. After removing the pieces of tape, here's the final and very successful reveal of the transfer technique. Now that all the preparatory work is complete, we get to move on to the actual painting. In every painting, I like to color block every part to plan out if certain color combinations will deliver the results I hope for. Luckily, the person who requested their calculator lid gave me the exact reference photo they wanted. Their picture is a photo reference from Pinterest, and I will certainly give credits to the original artist who designed it. If you are interested in other works that artist has done, I shall provide some helpful links to the social media in the description box down below. Anyways, getting back to the painting, here are some helpful tips I've learned along the way that anyone can incorporate in their work on surfaces that aren't necessarily the typical canvases or paper. Tip number one, the only writing utensil where the ink doesn't dry up on you midway when you're outlining is paint markers. I have found that paint markers are the only things that work when outlining on already painted surfaces. Yes, Sharpies do work for a little bit but end up looking like a dark purple and the ink medium doesn't really mix well with the acrylic medium. Tip number two, use regular acrylic paints to fill in the background and larger spaces of the painting, but leave the rest to the paint markers. The paint markers are great for extreme details when you don't want to buy a whole entire set of new brushes. Lastly, if you want to add an extra layer of protection with a clear glitter coat, make sure the black outlines are fully dried before you apply the coat. I made the huge mistake of not being patient and ended up skipping the coat since the smearing made me retouch the fine detail areas. So this is the final result of the calculator lid. Yes, there was a lot of off-camera work, so it was really detail-oriented and didn't really want to expose my face, so I'm just going to do a little rundown of what I actually did. So instead of a pure red background, I just did streaks of red and pink just to make it look a little more artsy, you know? and then I added some sparkle clear coat only to the background because I tried to do that for the whole thing and it ended up smearing all the black marker outlines so then I had to just redo all that mistakes and then I added the baby blue to the waves just to make it a little more realistic even though it's a cartoon and then I added some purple to the darker areas of the boat and oar and then I have some highlights in this water region with some light blue white and then Overall, I just added some water splashes with just some white dots all over the place. And lastly, I'm just going to show you how to do a clear coat just to really set in the painting and make sure that it doesn't get scratched easily. If you guys are wondering what the brand of spray I use, it's the Rust Oleum American Accents 2 times Ultra Clear Gloss Clear and it basically bonds to everything. So I put it in a box and then I just had some rocks as a weight zigzag motion over whatever object you're desiring to spray. I'm going to do this two times or so, maybe three, depending on how much coverage and durability you want. When you're spraying anything, make sure to do it in a ventilated area or preferably outside so you don't get poisoned by the toxic fumes. Shall we begin? Make sure to get the sides too. And then you want to make sure this sets for 24 hours to be completely dry but within four hours, it should be dry enough to handle with your hands. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Comment in the comment section below. Leave it a thumbs up if you liked it. And I hope you all have a wonderful day.